Hey guys, good morning. I'm going to do some stuff today, including go on a walk and try to find a few things and maybe even go on my last trip here with the guys from Ballard RV Park to go find one more destination here before I kind of leave the park indefinitely. But I'm going to go on a walk and it's supposed to be 79 degrees today, so I'm going to do something a little different. I've talked about how to keep the van cool when Jax is in here by himself and when I'm not in here, right? So I have the fantastic fan which in the daytime when it's warm, I switch it to the blowing air out position. So it's taking the warmer air and blowing out. A lot of times what I'll do if I'm not plugged into power is I'll just turn the air conditioner on, but fan only. So it's gonna be blowing in some fresh air to circulate, uh, maybe the air cooler on the ground and then the hotter air gets blown out. But because I am plugged into power here, there's really no reason not to just keep the air conditioner on all the time. Yes, some people might consider this a fire hazard, but come on, you know, people in RVs leave all sorts of worse mechanical stuff on. You know, the, the furnace that's out, that's an open flame. The, the refrigerator, if that's on propane, that's an open flame. There's lots of other potential, you know, fire hazards and stuff, and um, I, I wouldn't do it if I wasn't absolutely safe with it, and I am because there's people here at the park. I have CO2 sensors, I have smoke detectors, so. It's not going to be an issue. I just want Jax to be comfortable. Remember also, if I'm in a place where I go somewhere and I'll be there for a few hours, I can run my air conditioner straight off of my batteries and solar for up to, well, I think it shuts off right around three and a half hours. It, technically, the specs, if you do the math, you're supposed to get about, based on my amp hours and the voltage and everything, about four hours of air conditioner off the battery before the voltage of the four batteries will actually drop too low to power the compressor. It'll just do the fan. So um, that is another option. Uh, you can run air conditioners off of batteries and an inverter and solar panels and stuff. So anyway, I'll go for a little walk here. I will see you in a tiny bit, okay? Oh, okay. And then the microphone is the other thing that still needs to be addressed. A couple weeks ago, I was talking about, I was, I can't remember where I was at, but the microphone with the windshield, you know, so that I can talk when it's windy and I'm moving. It had this clicking sound, and I did finally figure out what the problem was. If anybody's interested, remember that is a 99 cent microphone that I got off eBay. The problem was the cord that hooks right into the microphone. Every time it moves down here, it was making that clicking sound. Absolutely worse than wind. Well, worse than wind, and worse than just getting rid of all of my narration and just putting in music. That's what I've been doing a lot lately. But I may be upgrading to a new microphone here shortly as well. All right, just walking here in the desert. That cell phone tower right there is not a Sprint tower. Oh, I hate Sprint. I hate Sprint. I hate Sprint. I, think I really got to do something about that. It's so annoying sitting right next to somebody who's just 4G LTE texting away, getting all their data. And I'm paying $210 a month sitting there, no service. It's a terrible feeling. I'll fix it though, I'll fix it real soon. All right, so we're coming up on some old structures here. This old town uh, has pretty much turned into a ghost town. Why? Because they built I-70 over there. So this highway that I'm approaching, is it six? can't remember the number. Anyway, it's it's gone. All of these old houses and businesses are just completely abandoned. Hey, this is a fixer-upper, actually. This one here? Oh, yeah. I could definitely fix this one up. I downloaded a new movie, one I did not have in my collection last night. The movie I downloaded was... Thelma and Louise. Why? Because I walked past this yesterday and I didn't have my camera. <laughs> this is filmed in the movie, the storefront right here. This is the cafe where they shot a scene from Thelma and Louise. Can I zoom in and see anything in there? Yeah, kind of. There you go. And then this out here would have been, this This is an old Amtrak station, actually. So this is a boarding place for a passenger Amtrak. 
this is the old highway that runs uh, parallel to I-70 now. And then across the street here, you have the old Thompson Motel. Now this also was featured in the movie Thelma and Louise. Uh, looks like they've uh, boarded up some windows over here. We'll, we'll kind of get to it. Well, there you go. A little bit of movie history there for you. Of course, if you come to Utah, there's all kinds of movie history. And there's the old wore out Thompson Motel sign. Oh man, that thing is weathered, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the van and get all my batteries and supplies and everything, and then Jim and I are gonna hop in the Suburban and go try to find some dinosaur tracks here in Utah. Remember I was over at the Dewey Bridge the other day? At one point, now I'm just at a different, different side of the Dewey Bridge. Up close. These are the cables. Them big honking cables, actually. Let's go check it out. Dewey Bridge built in 1916, restored in 2000. Again, like I said uh, the other day when I filmed from the other side when we were driving through, uh, rumor has it uh, fireworks were set off and burned all of the wood. So that's why there still is no bridge even though this was recently restored. I think it would be neat if they restored it again. Because like I said, this is the first official bridge across the Colorado River here in Utah, so a lot of history. One of these little bathroom huts right here, hole in the ground type thing. Interestingly enough, these like bathrooms, they're always the same in every state. BLM, D DNR, state parks, they're always the exact same. I remember when they erected the first one last summer in Washington State um, over in a Capitol Forest. It's like, wow, this is really cool. Because it's like a, you know, dry camping, pack it in, pack it out type thing. And then all of a sudden there's bathrooms and you don't need your own porta potty anymore. So I thought that was really cool. But I guess the same uh, contractor must get all the same little build plans for those all around the country. Okay, where am I taking you guys? Well, saw something when we turned in here. Yeah, it looks like a weird little door or cave into this camp canyon here. I'm gonna go check it out. Well, it's definitely a man-made opening. Hello? Any bears in there? Please don't eat me. I'm coming in. Wow. Cozy. Very cozy. Would anyone ever, like, camp in this overnight, though? Like, when it gets dark? 